Are you confused with how much flexibility is actually enough and how much you actually need? Oh, hang on. Hi guys, Tom Morrison here and I'm going to give you three essential requirements that show that you have good mobility. And I do not care who you are, this should be stuff that your mum, your dad, your granny, your granda, your sister's dog should be able to do. Everyone should be able to do this stuff. I spend a lot of time around people that can do all kinds of fancy stuff, that can do backflips and heavy lifts and all kinds of fancy gymnastics stuff, but I do understand that there's a lot of people out there that aren't really that interested in that kind of stuff and for them just not being sore in the morning when they wake up would be a win, okay? So not everyone is into advanced levels of fitness and strength and I think that it would be great to set a nice standard that everyone can sort of understand so that they can all feel good and get the benefits of having good mobility. The most crucial thing to realize is that if your body is giving you pain, it could be because it feels weak, okay? So I didn't get my dad bod from one bag of sweets, it happened over time. So if you imagine you're spending every day sort of slumped over and walking with your head forward and you know, you're just waddling from side to side and you're just not moving very well, over the years that's going to mount up. Your joints are gonna feel stiffer and stiffer and stiffer and you're just not going to feel good about yourself. The biggest thing that terrifies me as I get older would be to lose my independence, okay? So with technology now and jobs lasting you know, many hours a day that you're just sitting all day, everyone is going to start turning into a gargoyle. So where do we start? What is the bare minimum? Oh, hey Jenny. So next time you see your friend, push them over. If she takes longer than 10 minutes to get up, we have a starting point. That's something that we can build on. Getting up and down off the floor is a very basic skill and there are many different elements to it. So wherever you're starting from, so say Jenny was really, really old, she hasn't done anything for a long time, or maybe not even really, really old, just hasn't done anything for a long time. She needs to put both hands down the floor nice and slowly and sort of move herself down into the position. This is absolutely fine as long as you're starting to work on it. Next thing we want to look at is can we sit cross-legged on the floor and sit upright with the hips open like this, okay? So this is one of the things that I couldn't do even from a very young age and this gave me a ton of problems whenever I um, started this, starting the strength training. So whenever I was to sit down, my right leg would be completely up and my left leg would be down. So this is basically how I sat if I was cross-legged and I couldn't sit up straight at all. I had to have my hands behind me. So that's one very first thing that you want to look at. You want to see, can you have both knees down beside and hands off the ground and sort of sit up you know, relatively straight, okay? So this is one of your most important tests and then swap the legs, which one's around in front as well. See, can you do that? One of the long-term things we want to see about getting up off the floor is how little things we can put down to get ourselves up. So full variation of being able to get up without putting any hands down on the floor at all. So that'd be absolutely great. But if we go back down again, can we sit down without having to put any hands on the floor? But if you have to sort of put one down, that's better than having to put two down or having to use, say, your sofa to get yourself up. And you can build this up, just practice it every day, a couple of minutes every day, and just, you will find that you see improvements just from going through these ranges and getting up and down, okay? So a lot of people read things like core strength and all this sort of stuff. You know, this is core strength, being able to actually maneuver yourself and getting yourself down, okay? It's not just doing sit-ups, you know, getting up and down off the floor is a big deal to some people. So it's very important that you're able to do this um, a long term. Next thing I want you to test is the bow position. Now, what we're gonna do is lie down on our belly and all we really wanna see here is can you reach behind and grab each foot like this, okay? So this is just your very first thing. Just can you do that? That's enough, okay? That's as far as you really need to go. You can go into the bow position, which looks like this. It's a bit more fancier and requires a bit more flexibility, but again, it's not essential. If we just bring it back down, just can you do that? That is enough, okay? So that shows me that you're able to move really good from the obliques. You're able to have their quads and your hips open enough that you're able to actually grab your own feet. And it also shows me that your pecs and your biceps and your chest is open enough that you're actually able to achieve this position. So if you are, so Jenny, let's go over feet. If you cannot shift side to side, so you're not allowed to shift side to side and try and grab your feet, okay? Oh, well, Jenny's got quite flexible quads, so I'll start cheating. But if you say really, really couldn't shimmy side to side to grab, then that would show one thing. If your quads are really tight, your feet are going to be back there somewhere. You're not going to be able to grab them. Or if your shoulders are really tight, you're, you're going to be on the floor. You're not going to be able to grab them. So that's going to show you all them things. So see if you can do this. If not, then that is definitely something that you want to work on. And then you can progress into the full bow eventually if you so wish, but it will take time and practice. The last thing that we want to see is can you stand on one leg for one full minute?
almost seems too simple, but for a lot of people, this is a massive struggle. And this points to massive lack of hip stability, knee stability, ankle stability, core stability. And this is the stuff that people feel on and they're going and getting massages and dealing with back pain and using foam rollers and doing all that kind of stuff. And this is what they're actually struggling with. This is more important to work on. So you want to see, can you do one minute on your right leg and then swap it over? One minute on your other leg, your left leg, that's the one. If you can do this easily, that's pretty good, okay? Then from there, so Jenny could do this all day. She's not really gonna get any benefits from it anymore. So we can start to make it a little bit harder for Jenny. So hopefully we can get her to fall, let's see. So what she's gonna do is go back to her other leg, whichever one she wants, leg up, and then make sure she's nice and balanced. And then really slowly, can you turn your head left and right in that position? And now we're really starting to see how much the foot and the ankle have to work. And we're really starting to get a bit more wobble, okay? So we're training the vestibular system here. We're working on tons of different stuff. Nice recovery, and you can relax, okay? So that's how you can start to step these things up that little bit. So see if you can stand on one minute each leg individually. If you are, say, um, really, really thinking that you're gonna struggle with this, then just have something in front of you to hold on to, like your kitchen counter or a rig post or anything that you have near you, so that if I just use my arms, if it was the kitchen counter, if Jenny was gonna fall, she can just sort of gradually let herself go. If she needs to keep balancing herself like that, then she's able to actually recover her balance without worrying about actually falling, okay? So that's how you can build that up. And if you work on it a little bit every day, you'll see results really, really quickly. Please don't just watch this video and then move on to the next one. Tag someone that you think needs to know this information and also try the exercises yourself as well. If you really want to take your mobility more seriously and move better and feel better all of the time, then please head over to tommorrison.uk and check out my program, The Simplistic Mobility Method. It is the easiest way for you to increase your joint mobility and add more to your core strength so that you move better and feel better all of the time.